All right. Hey, look, I want to welcome everyone along to Christ Central this morning. Hey, what a special morning this is. We've got our, our live audience here at the Hub. So good to, to have you guys gathered here. Um, and a warm welcome, everyone, to, to your live streaming in this morning. Now, my name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Central. Hey, just to kind of get a bit of interaction going between our live and our live streaming uh, gathering. Hey, let's give everyone a bit of a, bit of a cheer wherever you are. Give a bit of a cheer. Thank you. Now, I'm really excited that we do have, um, we've got probably about 50 people right here uh, in the hub and over on the kids section. Um, it is so good. It sort of feels like church this morning. Is that kind of what it feels like for you guys here? Like you're actually walking in and there's real people to hang around with and, and interact with. Um, so good. Uh, look, obviously, it's a bit of a different morning for us this morning, isn't it? Um, not only are we uh, live streaming and we've got our live gathering here at the hub, and we're doing that both at the same time. And we've got our picnic afterwards and we which we're, we're all going to gather from lots of different homes together and enjoy the afternoon um, uh, in fellowship together over at Petrie. But it's been, a, been quite a journey this year, hasn't it? Uh, we're almost, we're actually halfway through the year. Uh, we spent more than a quarter of the year in some sort of, under some sort of lockdown or restrictions. Um, maybe you've learned some, done some new things this year. You've learned something new. In fact, I've given it sort of a year, a, a year for first times, uh, first things. I thought we'd play a quick game just to kind of get a feel for what's some of the things that you might have done for the first time this year. So uh, I've called it lockdown bingo. So we're going to come up with a list of things here. I want you to, to, to kind of take note of the things that you might have done for the first time. If you get to five, let me know. You can give us a bit of a yell. If you're out there on the live stream, you can join into this as well. You can let us know in the chat. But here we go. Have you done one of these things for the first time? Okay. Have you taken up gardening? Have you taken up gardening for the first time this year? I know my wife has uh, become a real green thumb this year. Uh, at some stage this year, have you forgotten what day of the week it is? You know when you're just going through the week and you're just like, I, I actually just have no idea what day it is. Everything, every day seems the same. Okay, number three, have, have you let your wife, some other family member, maybe it's your wife, husband, mum, dad, cut your hair? because, you know, you couldn't get out to the hairdresser. Maybe you've done that for the first time. All right, have you made a TikTok video? I didn't know what TikTok was before this year, but apparently it's, a, it's the, the thing to do these days. Um, okay, have you stayed in bed past 12 p.m.? Is that something that you've done this year? Okay, what about you? Have you taught your grandparent how to video call? Or maybe you've been taught by a grandchild how to video call. Have you started exercising again? Is that something you picked up? Have you watched an entire television series and, and kind of knocked it out in maybe a month or less? All right, has anyone got to five yet? Yeah, get, getting close, okay. Um, who has uploaded your own custom Zoom background? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's definitely a few people, yeah, enjoying that whole Zoom thing, okay. Oh, we've got a bingo over here. Who was that? Yes. And have we got any? Yeah, give him a clap. <laughs> Team Zilstra for the win. Um, anyone on the live stream that we know, have, have they gotten to 10 yet? Close. Okay. I've uh, gotten to five. Sorry. Okay. Last one. Um, who's watched the Christ Central live stream in their PJs? Yeah, there's a few people. Yeah, it's safe to say no one's in their PJs this morning. Uh, good to have everyone here. Um, I'll tell you what, it has been such a strange and different year. Maybe you've done something weird or different um, this year that you've never done before as a result of that. Uh, but, you know, even if it's been a, a, a really weird year, a hard year perhaps for some, uh, one of the things we can always stand on is the love of our Father in heaven. And we're actually going to spend a moment to sing about that now. Now, according to government uh, uh, restrictions and according to our denomination, we are allowed to sing. So if you're here at the hub, uh, let's stand and raise our voices uh, in praise to God. And if you're on the live stream, hey, in your, in your living rooms, let's do that likewise as well. So let's stand and sing together. Lift up your voices and lift up your praise. Join with the heavens declaring the wonders of this faithfulness forever. Sing of the victory, the hope of the world. The Savior has risen, the Spirit has come to bring us into love forever. The people. 
Have a seat, everyone. I tell you, how good is singing? How good is singing? It's been, been, been a while, hasn't it, to be able to just actually be able to belt that out with a whole bunch of other people. Um, so glad to be able to do that this morning with you. Hey, this morning as we do kick off, um, we're going to be, uh, we've got a one-off Bible talk this morning, which is all about the gathering of God's people. So God's one is going to be uh, bringing us that word this morning. Um, so our talk here, it's called Church Assembly Required. Um, and, and that's a great thing to be launching off our new term together when we do, when we are in that stage three now and we can uh, start meeting in bigger groups and we're going to be doing our picnic later. Um, how important is it for us to, be able to actually be able to gather and to be able to gather in person. So that's going to be coming up um, today, this morning, but actually this week, um, starting uh, uh, with this week in our growth groups and then kicking on with uh, the sermon series starting next Sunday, we've got our series starting on Exodus. Now, Exodus is one of the great epic stories of the Old Testament. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of the, the big things that you think of um, uh, in the Bible, epic things that happen, like the parting of the Red Sea or the burning bush and all those things are coming up in our series on Exodus. Now, um, you might have seen on our Facebook um, uh, page that, that actually our kids have been getting together to film the Exodus story. Now, I don't know about you, I found that's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to see what um, the kids have come up with on that. Now, just as we are talking about kids, um, uh, we have something that our kids team have put together, which is a new thing, which is a little family devotional. So our series is called Save for God's Glory, and we'll be working through that here um, uh, as, we, as we work through that on Sunday mornings. But actually, our family discipleship guide is a chance for you to be working through with your kids um, uh, the story of Exodus and, and, and what we can learn from that. So uh, a lot of these would have been delivered out to some of our families already and some will be coming out uh, very shortly. Uh, but that's going to be something cool and exciting. If you're here and you're new this morning, it might be something that you could pick up uh, from us this morning. Now, for our adults, um, we're going to be starting our growth groups this week. Um, so they're little gatherings in homes from pretty much from uh, Albany Creek right up to Morayfield. We've got groups all over the place, a chance to meet and, and spend time in fellowship with a small group of people in a home. Uh, our growth groups are really cool. If you want to find out more about them, you can find out more on our website and you can even sign up for them. In fact, now would be a great time to be thinking about growth groups and signing up for them because uh, they're just about to start back. Now, if you are new, uh, we want to welcome you. Uh, if you're new, you're tuning into our live stream for the first time. I'm a special one. Welcome to you. So great to have you. Um, now, uh, now, as we are joining here at the Hub and we've got our live stream, um, we, want, we want to know that you've been here with us if you are new. So if you're new, um, uh, we've got a little video to show us on how you can let us know that you've actually been with us. So uh, tune into this video. While we're live streaming, it's hard to get a sense of who's joining us week by week. So we'd love you to fill out this form each week to let us know you've joined us. It only takes a few seconds. Head over to christcentral.org.au forward slash connect and you'll find this page or click on the link in the live stream chat. If you're new with us, leave us some details and we'll send you a welcome pack and information about our upcoming community events. We'd love to meet you in person. If you're a regular at Christ Central, just get one person in your household to fill out the form and you can even let us know if you're live streaming with others. It's that simple. And we're going to give you a moment to do that right now. So head on over to christcentral.org.au forward slash connect and let us know you've been with us and feel free to leave a comment about what you think of this morning. Again, thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of our live stream. Hi, Christ Central. Didn't realize you were there. Bill Allen's my name. 
You might know me from such Facebook posts as Tuesdays with Bill. But we're not here to hear about me. Let's see what's happening in the life of our church. We've had bush walks, coffee walks and games nights. But some of us just like to chat over some craft. And on Wednesday nights, some of us got to do just that. Now it's Sunday, and as you might know by now, we're having small gatherings at the Hub on Sundays. We'd like everyone to make it to one of in July, so if you haven't booked your place already, head over to christcentral.org.au slash hub and book your place in it now. We have a creche and kids programs running, so there's something for every age and stage. Today, we're also going to have a, a picnic, all of us, how about that? Come and join us at Sweeney's Reserve at Petrie from 11am. Bring your own lunch and maybe a game to play in the park. For once there will be no limits on how many people can gather. All are welcome, whether you're new or old. But if you are new to Christ Central, we have our startup course coming up in two weeks time. Startup is where you can hear all about our church, our vision and how we can be involved. And we'll do it over lunch so you can enjoy a meal with others. Just check it out at christcentral.org.au slash startup. And you can sign up for startup there. Now there's one thing if I'd like to tell you about, we can only whisper because we're not 100% sure yet. Here's the secret. We're still planning on having a church camp this year. We don't know if we'll definitely be able to, but it won't be in, wouldn't it be great if we could? Whatever you do, don't book anything on the weekend of the 23rd to the 25th of October, because if restrictions keep lifting and we're able to, we're still going to head up to Somerset Dam together. So keep that date free. Well, that's it for me. If you missed anything, head over to our website and check out the what's on section. Thanks for joining me for Sundays with Bill. See you next time. Bye. Hey, tell you what, uh, the weather is looking uh, like it's holding out out there, so we are going to be heading out for our picnic at 11 o'clock this morning. I think as the forecast is for rain, something around, around 3 o'clock or so in the afternoon. Uh, but hey, let's go and live it up and enjoy that picnic uh, while that weather is looking actually quite nice out there right now. So uh, we'll see you over at Petrie after this. Now, I'm going to invite Emily up here because she's actually going to uh, lead us in a moment of prayer. So uh, I'm going to hand this over to Emily. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, I'm going to lead us in prayer this morning. Uh, we're going to be praying for a few things that are happening in our church, but in particular, we're going to be praying for some of the people in our church who are facing illnesses or are facing family members who are ill. Um, so particularly, uh, you might not have heard or you might have heard last night, um, Matt Bagery, um, one of our church family, uh, is facing the possibility of... Uh, hip cancer, so we're going to pray for him today as well. Would you join with me in praying? Dear Heavenly Father, the God of all grace and mercy, we come before you today so thankful for all you've done for us in redeeming us to be your people. Thanks that you sent your son to die and rise again, to pay the price for our sins so that we can be part of your family as your sons and daughters. Thanks that we have a hope beyond this world and anything it offers, a hope in eternity with you forever. Lord, please help us to be a church that remains strong in our faith in you, that we would help each other to have eyes faithfully fixed on you and resist the devil who is looking to devour and destroy us. Lord, please strengthen us to endure any sufferings we will face in the coming month, weeks, months, and years, and to be casting our anxieties fully on you, knowing that you care deeply for us as your dearly beloved children. Lord, thanks for the easing of restrictions here in Queensland in the past weeks and the very low numbers of COVID-19 in our state. Please continue to help our country to fight this illness. Lord, we pray that as we take steps towards meeting together in person again, that we would be able to express our commitment to Christ and each other as we meet here in the hub 
in homes and out in our community. We thank you for the great blessing that we will be able to meet together as a whole church later today at the picnic. Please use this time together to be a great encouragement to each other and to help our community to see you. Might you use our time together to bring our friends, family and neighbours to see your love for them. Please also use our time together in our different gatherings over the coming weeks to equip and encourage each other in our walk with you as we grow in maturity in you. Be with our growth groups as they kick off again this week, as well as those doing one-to-ones and parents in our church as they encourage their children in their walk with you. Help all of us to not give up meeting together, but to continue each- encouraging each other as we see the day approaching. Lord, we bring before you Rachel Cotter and the AFES ministry at Petrie Campus. Lord, we thank you for the young people who have begun to meet their last semester. Lord, please continue to work in the students on that campus. Help them to reach out to their fellow classmates with your gospel. Please continue to guide and strengthen Rachel as she meets with students and helps to train and equip them with your word. Lord, we bring before you the many people in our world who are suffering at this time with illnesses and diseases. We particularly bring before you Matt Bagri, who has been in hospital this week with possible cancer in his hip. Lord, please help the doctors as they work to get a diagnosis, that you would bring about answers quickly so that they are able to help to bring Matt healing. Lord, we pray for Matt as he deals with pain and uncertainty, that you would bring him peace and comfort in knowing that you're the God who is in control and that you're gracious and good. Please be with Lockie, Jasmine and Stella at this time as they see their dad facing this painful time. Please be comforting them and giving them good community to love and support them. We also bring before you others in our church family with family members who are unwell and facing uncertainty of what the future might hold for them. Lord, we take comfort in knowing that these family members know and trust you as their Lord and Saviour. Please help their families to take comfort in this fact and in you. Lord, help us to support our church family as well as they face suffering in many different ways that we would all look to you for our comfort and strength. Lord, please help us now as we read your word and as Garnet speaks from it. Help us to have open ears and hearts to listen attentively and put your words into practice. Help us to be both hearers and doers of your word each and every day and to encourage each other to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to read the Bible now, so I'm going to hand over to Ken, who's going to bring the Bible reading. Thanks, Emily. I'm Ken Zilstra, and uh, we'll be reading a couple of Bible passages this morning. Uh, The first is from Matthew 16, and we'll be reading from verse 13 to verse 20. The second will be from Hebrews 12, and we'll be reading uh, verses 22 to 24. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So second reading is from Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, and from verse 22 to 24. 
But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Thanks very much, Ken. Let's try that one. Yes, I can hear myself there. So just to say, we are handing out uh, today paper copies of our photo directory. It's the, there on the table. So grab one um, today. They're available all over these next few Sundays, so no one's going to miss out. But um, you know, at the Swan household, we try to read the Bible and pray as a family after dinner. Uh, one of the things we've been doing is we've been uh, handing around this directory and for a bit of fun, randomly picking families people and praying for you and um, so we prayed for a whole bunch of you over these months um, but uh, now we're not just depending on the photos we actually get to see you and, and again welcome to those who are visiting us for the first time uh, we can now prove it we are not a tv show uh, we are a church so it's great to have you with us um, as matt said this coming week we're starting our new series on exodus um, it's what our growth groups will be doing this coming week. It's what our families will be doing with material we're making available. But today, uh, we're taking a moment to think about church. For a moment, I want us to dive deep into the Bible, and I want God to get under our skin. I want God to get into our hearts um, to speak to us, maybe unsettle us, to agitate us. I'd hope even to excite us about what God is calling his people to be about, church. So I'm now going to pray, and I'm going to invite you to pray with me. So let's, let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you um, for your word, and we pray that uh, for the sake of your name, for, for glory to go to you, that you would do a work in all our hearts so that we would know Christ, and we would know what you call us to. Um, uh, that in belonging to you, belonging to our Saviour Jesus, we indeed belong to one another. And may we really know that today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, perhaps you've heard about the Chinese Communist government over the last few years really stepping up their persecution of Christian churches. In fact, even during COVID, when you might have thought they would be a little bit preoccupied, in fact, they haven't let up, uh, continued to tear crosses down, um, demolish buildings, jail pastors, intimidate church goers. So I want, to imagine, I want you to imagine a Chinese government official somewhere sitting in his office, following his orders, intent on bringing under control these Christians in his city. And he has a map on the wall. On that map, he has pins across the city where these churches are. In fact, he's been able to pull out a few pins over the last few years, but frustratingly, also, some pins have had to be put on other places where new churches have popped up. Now, for us, pins on a map representing churches in our city probably doesn't mean too much, but for him, they represent a threat, allegiance to something other than the state and the party. Those pins show where indoctrination happens. 
those pins show where Christians gather and get their marching orders to head out and have more people and more members to gather with them. See, here's what that Chinese government official thinks as he looks at that map with all those remaining pins. If we crush their gatherings, we crush their movement. Now, I offer that way of thinking about Christians gathering because I don't think that's actually far from the truth. Now, we've gone through this crazy weird experience as a church. Look, we're still in it, aren't we? But I want us to see how incredibly central and countercultural and subversive and spiritually necessary it is to gather together. It's not that we should assemble because it's good and beneficial. Churches gather together because it's essential to being church. Now, I want to make three points with you this morning, and they are church gathered represents Christ's kingly rule. Uh, Church gathered is a visible outpost of Christ's kingdom, and church gathered is for forming citizens who follow their king. And this is a bit of a deep dive this morning. We're going to look at plenty of Bible. Move quick. I invite you to think deeply with me this morning. You know, it is helpful to think the way of that government official who feels threatened by the existence of churches because he sees it as a foreign power. And there's something to that. Now, it's not that churches are training up terrorists. You know, we just finished one Peter series the other day, and there's those words there, Fear God, honor the emperor. You know, respect and submit to your government. But with church, as we gather, it does represent the invasion of the kingdom of heaven, where Christ rules, where his rule is displayed, his authority is shown. Now, I'll give you some passages to look up, but please start by turning back to the first one that Ken read for us before. It's uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Matthew 16, verse 16. I just want to point out a couple of things there. Now, famously, these words have been taken by, well, the Roman Catholic Church to justify popes, as if all the popes are in the spiritual line of the first so-called pope, Peter. And that's, um, but that's, I've got to say, that's reading all sorts of things in, into this. Now, when Jesus says, verse 18, on this rock I will build my church, He's not saying Peter and the popes will build Jesus' church. Uh, Jesus is saying it's Peter's true confession of who Jesus is will be the foundation and the way of building Jesus' church. It's what Peter says, verse 16. Have a look there. Uh, He says, you are the Christ, the Messiah, uh, the Son of the living God. Now, that gospel confession of truth that's been proclaimed for century after century, that's what builds God's true church. But have a look at verse 19 again. Uh, I'll read those words and they'll be on the screen as well. Uh, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, this has nothing to do with papal authority. But we're just going to leave that there, unexplained for a second. We'll keep those words up on the screen. But in your Bibles, I want you to now to flick over to chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Uh, Matthew 18, verse 15. Uh, This is a passage with lots going on in it. Uh, Jesus talks about, um, well, calling unrepentant sin in the church to account. But I want, you, I want you to notice what Jesus says there. Chapter 18, that's similar to what he said in chapter 16. Uh, read with me, chapter 15, 18, verse 15. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two, or two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever, wherever, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Now, do you see that repeating thing when Jesus talks about the church? Now, let's put that on the screen 
uh, from this passage. See, this is not about what the Pope does, but the church binds and loosens just as in heaven. It's Jesus' way of saying church displays a spiritual authority that comes from the kingdom of heaven. Making judgments on what is the Christian gospel. Making judgments on those who rightly accept the gospel and its implications for how we live. It's very full-on language. The church binding and loosing on earth as it is in heaven. I'll put it like this. The church is like an embassy. You know, for those who've ever spent time overseas, you know about an embassy, don't you? you know, like, it, an embassy is like a nation within a nation. Uh, it represents the government from another place. There's a sense of who are its own citizens. An embassy has delegated authority from its home, home nation. Uh, just to be clear here, the church to bind and loosen what will be bound and loosened in heaven is not, you know, we don't have some magical spiritual power. You know, we declare that the only color that should be worn is blue. You know, we declare that bacon is delicious and beads are awesome and it will be so and it is in heaven. No, no like an embassy, very specific, very delegated authority. The church can't even make someone a Christian. But bound to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we make judgments on what is the true Christian confession and makes judgments on who are the true confessors. And notice it says there, verse 20, about Christians gathering, gathering for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Uh, this is not when a few Christians get together, a mystical Jesus fog fills the room. Maybe we thought that. But this is when we're together, we bear Jesus' authority. We represent Jesus. We fly Jesus' flag. It's all rather full-on picture of church, isn't it? You know, from one perspective, we look like a very, like a very ordinary, voluntary community organization. You know, volunteers who gather with a common interest. You know, next door here at the uh, hub, next door is a gym. Right here today is church. And for many, you know, the gathering of people next door looks way more impressive than us because they've got way bigger muscles than us. But a Christian church which gathers around the united confession of who is Lord, well, we display the rule and the authority of heaven. We represent this foreign power. No wonder a Chinese communist official feels threatened. No wonder they don't like seeing all those pins on a map. As we gather, we represent the king's rule. So that's the first thing. Next point, church gathered is a visible outpost of Christ's kingdom. And this is, it's a little bit similar to the first point, but I want us to see how the Bible really just goes to town to show how that, that church is a physical, in the flesh reality. It really is a pin on the map, people that gather together. Actually, when you get into it, you actually see that the whole Bible is a story about God, well, first of all, um, scattering a wicked people in judgment but then graciously gathering his chosen and redeemed, say, people to himself. It starts with Adam and Eve. He scatters them from the garden. If you know that moment about the Tower of Babel, are those who want to make a name for themselves, he scatters them. Now, you can take this as a bit of a prep for next week as we start Exodus, but it's through a guy named Abraham that he promises to bless and gather a nation to himself. Uh, God doesn't want people scattered and apart and left to their own wickedness. He wants them together and united around him. In the story of Israel, soon after leaving Egypt, you get a moment which is called the Day of the Assembly at Mount Sinai, the giving of the law, the Ten Commandments and all that. And, and it says this, and it'll be on the screen. Moses says, The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God, on them were all the commandments the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out of fire on the day of the church. Now I fudge that a bit. Most English translations have the day of the assembly. 
But in the Greek Old Testament, the word is ecclesia, which is the New Testament, exact same word that we use for church, the day of the assembly, the gathering, ecclesia, the day of the church. And that's what Jesus brings about, you see. Jesus said, I will, bring my, I will build my ecclesia, I will build my church. When Jesus talks about that group of people that will assemble in his name, he could have picked different words. He could have said, oh, this, you, you guys will be the synagogue. You guys will be the fellowship. No, he said, he used that word from Mount Sinai, from Zion, the day of the assembly, the church. Just to blow your mind, check out this verse from Hebrews. It's what Ken read before. Um, but this is a word to Christians, to those who've come to know Christ, what Christ did on the cross for us. But those words are again, it says, but you have come to Mount Zion. So there's not just the day of the church at the time of Moses. There's the day of the church today. To the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. Uh, this is saying, brought into this gathering of God's saved people, we become something so much bigger and exciting and eternal. And we can't see it. It's invisible. When we gather the bigger thing, the invisible thing, the exciting thing that we're part of, when we gather together, is not we become part of the, I don't know, Presbyterian Church of Australia. That's not exciting, in case you wondered. The big thing that we become part of when we gather together is actually this myriad of angels or this myriad of saved, redeemed people in joyful assembly gathered around God, our Savior, our mediator who gave his blood for us. I, I told you it's mind-blowing. You you it's hard to get your head around this. But God has always been about gathering. That's the story of the Bible. God's way of gathering uh, the church through Jesus. So this church reflects the king's authority. This church testifies to his rule. This church is the visible outpost of the heavenly reality. As that Chinese government official looks at the pins on the map, no wonder he gets a bit worried. You know, church is not a place. Uh, people will say to me, I left my umbrella at the church. And we don't even have a churchy looking building to help people you know, think that. It's just so natural, is it? The vocab that we all tend to use. But church is not a place, church is a people. But it's the gathered people who come to a place. We're like a basketball team. We're like any sporting team. A, a team doesn't stop being a team when it stops playing together. But a team is a team by virtue that it does play somewhere together. You can't be on a basketball team if you never show up for a game. You can't be a church member without gathering. Uh, church is what God is about. This actual visible outpost of God's kingdom. I'll say one more thing about church today, and by no measure am I saying everything that could be said about church, our reason, our purpose, our mission, but just to say one more thing, church gathering, church gathered is forming citizens who follow their king. Churches gather to teach everything that Jesus commanded us. Here at this embassy, here at this embassy, every Sunday, we offer citizenship classes to teach people how to be followers of their king. It, you know, it's only through the Holy Spirit that, uh, you know, he creates and he shapes disciples of Jesus. But the Spirit's given us things. The reading and the teaching of the Bible, the singing of God's truth to one another. It's so good to do today. Things like the Lord's Supper even. And we're given each other in accountability. We're giving each other to encourage one another. As we do all this together, this is what it means to meet in Jesus' name. Uh, together we testify to the truth that Jesus is King, uh, that he is over our lives and we want to grow in him. 
Uh, there's some passages on the screen about what happens in church to form us as citizens of the king. If you just notice there, there's a couple of similar phrases there. There's this mutual desire to serve and build up the church. We gather so we might be shaped and changed by the Spirit. And through our own humble service, others might be shaped and changed by the Spirit. Uh, citizens of the King are formed in that gathering that takes place. Again, no wonder that Chinese communist official gets nervous as he looks at those pins in a map, churches, Christians gathering together. Now, I do want us to get us all thinking about Christ Central right now with what we're going through. I hope God's word is getting under your skin, getting into your heart, that you're seeing that the great heavenly, spiritual, eternal realities of church is sadly actually crashing against the situation we're in right now of you know, COVID, COVID pandemic. And we are. We are voluntarily as an act of submission to our government, as an act of love for others, we're not living out that reality of gathering weekly like we should. And so I so want us to have a sense of dissatisfaction with that. You know, we talk about essential hairdressers, uh, sorry, essential services. You know, I'm going to get in trouble, but you know people said hairdressers were essential service? I'm definitely going to get in trouble for saying this, but hairdressing. An essential service. Come on, let us all just grow at our grey roots and have floppy hair. But, but, but church, church is essential to being church. But, but I full well know through live streaming, through the habit of sitting on the couch in our PJs with a cup of tea, we've made it feel as if the church gathering is not essential. And you can have it all in the comfort of your own home. I mean, we've been deliberate in providing a live stream. We still will be. Uh, we believe it's better than nothing. There's encouragement to be had, this, had with this. You know, we've been able to reach people we haven't before. But it's not the way we want to be. If you're a Christian, seeing what God has to say, can you see it's not what we want to be doing? Uh, we're still living with COVID-19 restrictions. Today we can have about 50 people in the building. Our plan is to do it for two more weeks and then assess. Who would have ever thought we would ask people to book a seat for church? Just crazy, really. Then there's uh, those at home who are watching the live stream, maybe with others as well, which is terrific. Uh, we don't know how long this will last. We don't know how long we can't be the church we really want to be. But I want God's word on church to create in you an itch that because of restrictions, an itch that you sadly cannot scratch. You want to gather. You want to leave your home, but you just can't because the opportunity isn't there. I realize it's hard. We're all going through these new habit-forming experiences. It's not straightforward. I think just to flick a switch, it'll all just go back to the way it was before. I mean, I'm surprised that people here at the Hub haven't, in the middle of my own Bible talk, you know, got up and stretched their legs and had a cup of tea and chatted to the person next to them, because that's what you used to do, right? So thank you for that. But, you know, I, I heard from someone at church uh, that they, had this, they, they thought that with her husband's time at work, she wouldn't be able to get to any of the, well, two out of the three Sundays coming up. She could only get to one. So very quickly, she got on the website and booked her and her husband in, you know, she had a fear of missing out. FOMO for church. Now, maybe we think church has gotten easier, better, more convenient. But truthfully, we should all have a FOMO for church. If we're Christian, we really do miss out by not meeting together. If we're Christian, um, well, we've got to say, there's, you know, there is a few, well, there's a couple spare seats today even. And there's plenty of spare seats over the next two Sundays at the moment. You know, if you're healthy, if you, see, if you feel safe about your health as you spend time with others, as a practical step, why not today get on the website and book your place on one of the Sundays coming up? 
Uh, 2020 has been a a year of, of great upheaval. I think we're all still wanting to see what will be the ongoing, you know, embedded impacts in our society, how we do life. I think there will be, I think we all realize there's going to be some long lasting effects. As one example, I just read an article the other day that said there could be up to 50% of PhD students who drop out from their study program. Could be as high as 50%, no longer doing PhDs. What might be the dropout rate effect in church? Even talking to fellow ministers around the place, it seems as if COVID is creating a moment for people to off-ramp out of church. Just, you know, it's just happening. Um, We just won't see people again. So we're going to see, you know, we're going to, as we as we know, we're going to see plenty of job seekers, but we will also we will also see jo- uh, church seekers. But the worst thing of all would be if those church seekers never become church keepers. It will mean they haven't got the vision of what God calls us to. To be a Christian is to gather. Uh, the gathering represents Christ's authority. It's an outpost of God's kingdom. It's how we form citizens of the kingdom. I want you to realize that church is not a state of mind. It's not a state of mind. Church is a geographic, embodied, physical experience. It's a gathering. It's a pin in the map. You can see it. You can hear it. You can taste it on Sundays when we have our Lord's Supper. Uh, You can touch it, though we're very nervous about that right now. Plenty of hand sanitizer and we're all socially distanced. But church, church isn't straightforward like it used to be. Things to manage, it's a tricky time. We need to be alert to what might be changing with realities of pandemic and public health. You know, as we look to relaunch and re-emerge and re-engage and all those other re's. But with whatever decision we have to make. And for the time being, as we have limited and impoverished experience of church, it's important to know it is an impoverished experience of church. It's just what we have to do. A pin on a map, a location, a place, it's not a bad representation of what church is. We gather to represent Christ's rule. Church is an outpost of Christ's kingdom. We need church to grow as disciples of Jesus, our King. Uh, let's look forward to gathering and do what we can in this time to gather together. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for his blood shed at the cross so that we might be brought to you as your sons and daughters. Uh, that we are the, uh, the, the firstborn, the, the church of the firstborn, that those that gather, those that gather around Mount Sinai and praise you with the myriad of angels and saints. And so, Father, help us to know this, to treasure this reality of all that we have in Christ. And, Father, we thank you for uh, taking us through this time during COVID-19. Uh, you're in control. We take so much comfort in that. Father, we thank you for the gift of many things, such as technology and live streaming, for the gift of being able to be with others, to be with others in our lounge rooms. We thank you for all those blessings. And Father, help us all to know and have that deep conviction of church is the gathering. And Father, please be with us as we move through this time. Uh, Help us all to have that conviction, conviction of our hearts, and that we might live that out together that we might uh, together just know that we, uh, we live out Christ's authority amongst us. We are a visible expression of the eternal realities of, an, of a heavenly gathering. And indeed, Father, we need each other. We need this gathering so that we might grow as disciples of Jesus. And so, Father, please be with our church. Please grow us. Please let us be a church that we would send, send outwards so that we might see more people one to Christ and gather with us. And we thank you so much for our Lord, Saviour and King Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. All right, we're now going to sing a song.
And uh, again, just the privilege of being able to, uh, for here to be able to sing it together. So please stand, and if you're at home, sing it as well. Um, be great. I'll tell you what, thank you for joining and gathering with us here at the Hub or in your home uh, if you're live streaming in this morning. Of course, this is not the end of our gathering this morning, is it? Uh, because we are heading out for our picnic shortly um, uh, over towards Petrie. Now, that's not just a social gathering, is it? As we've heard this morning that actually when God's people do gather, it is a little picture, an outpost of God's kingdom and, and, and of the declaration that God, Jesus is our king. 
So hey, I think there's some great reminders this morning of the importance and the value of gathering together of as God's people. And we're going to be continuing to do that, uh, gathering from homes and from the hub and everywhere over towards Petrie uh, shortly after that. Go and enjoy that while uh, the weather is holding out for us. Um, but hey, I want to thanks also for, for, our, for the crew who have joined us and gathered here at the hub for Sundays at the hub. It's um, been awesome to have you guys. Awesome just to be able to sing with you guys. Um, if you haven't had a chance to book in, as Garnet mentioned, make sure you book in over the next couple of weeks to get down here, hey, even just to enjoy the fellowship and the singing down here, um, that alone I reckon is, is well worth um, uh, coming and gathering here to enjoy that together. Uh, but how I want to uh, say that we've got, uh, we don't have any morning tea down here, it's one of the kind of quirks of the regulations that we can't serve food down here, uh, but feel free to hang around and mingle for a little bit, um, can spend sometimes a bit of nice shade out there outdoors as well, otherwise we will see you at the picnic and uh, as we close up, one night pray for us. Let's pray. Father God, we do want to thank you for the opportunity to, to meet here, that, Lord, we don't have a government that is bearing down, trying to eliminate churches, but, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you that Jesus has died for us. We want to thank you that we gather, we, we, are, we belong to the universal church. And yet even here, Father, as we gather in small groups here at the Harbin houses, Father, I might, might continue to, to, to turn our eyes and our ears to you, that we might worship you with our lives that we might be indeed formed as your followers, shaped by your word, shaped by each other. Indeed, Father, we, uh, as we continue to gather over at our picnic, Father, might that be just a moment to remember, remember the church that we are and the, and the, the greatness of being gathered together as your people. And might we um, do that in thankfulness and thanksgiving to you for what you've done for us. Amen. All right, well, hey, uh, it's goodbye from us here at The Hub. And to all those live streaming, we'll see you all soon at the picnic.